Hey everybody, this is Herschel Froome from High School Top 200 and uh, this uh, Kelsum Boys High School Review for 2016 is brought to you by Fine Line Barbers. My boy Vinny at Fine Line Barbers has put together a Aotearoa barber barbering competition with a major barber supplier here in New Zealand. So the Aotearoa barber competition will be in September 2017. Uh, Fine Line Barbers is going to set up a uh, Facebook page and an Instagram page for barbers around the country to uh, start uploading their work and start uh, putting out their talent to us as a public so that we can see and then we can also um, come together on um, the competition day and sort of have some context about who um, uh, the barbers are around the country and what they can do and what their work is and we can also get haircuts from them. Uh, this is going to be a, a really good thing for the barbering industry and being able to bring them all together show us as a public what we have in New Zealand uh, the vendors will be coming as well as barber shops and, and different things like that and spot prizes and all those kind of things so Aotearoa barber, Barbering Competition uh, 2017 in September uh, Fine Line Barbers will be putting on with my boy Vinny um, Kelson Boys um, Kelson Boys is I think I think they're the most winningest school uh, nationally uh, them and Wesley, I think it is. Um, so, obviously, that this is one of the the uh, traditional rugby schools in the country. Um, they've always had success. They've always had a lot of talent. They've always had more than enough players to bring out a national side. Um, and so whenever you play them or whoever plays them, plays them with that kind of um, a mindset is that if you're beating Calston boys, you're beating a team that is um, traditionally strong, um, one of the top in the country all the time, and um, they're going to throw everything at you. Now, what Calston is struggling with... Um, and this is what I personally think and what Carlson is struggling with and that they haven't sort of found um, the balance. They're getting closer to the balance. But what I think is that they don't know yet how to um, make up for the boys that they lose to Rugby League. If Rugby League was not part of the school, and they've done great in Rugby League, so like you can't really... Um, get rid of rugby league in, in the school because it's working like if they weren't working then i think it would be an easy and argue easier argument but it, it's not like it's not working it's working great but they still haven't found that balance of um being able to fill the gaps of the um first 15 team with the guys who have left for the thir first 13 and so i think they personally still struggle with that because they've never had to do something like that before. And it's not like something where you get used to it like a year or two after. It takes a while because you're you're thinking about boys who are in under 14s or in under 15s who get to a point where they're just like, oh, I don't know if I want to play first 15 or if I want to play first 13. You know, like the, that kind of mindset is what you have to kind of go through. So uh, what the coaching staff has done with Shane Muller and them, they've, they've been able to sort of identify um, where they want to go with the direction and getting the support of the boys as well as strong commitments from players that they want to keep within their system and within the guys. And so even when even if guys decide to still go with league, they don't have a drop off. Um, they don't have a drop off so much that it leaves the first fifteen um, without. I mean, this year they had some really good players, and and this year I think it was a a uh, time for them to really implement their plan and get the boys used to it. So it was always going to be a hard year for them. Um, they did have some good players. They did have some really class players and also some really good guys who, who will be coming back next year. Um, they always have a game against... Um, they always have a game against Massey, which, is always, which always is a really good... Um, a really good preseason game because Massey's a, a really hard team to play and they're always competitive and things like that. And so it was good for them to get a hit out like that. Um, they 
went through the competition um, just trying to find themselves in terms of what they could do. Um, they had a bad start against Kings. Um, they should have had a better game against Auckland Grammar, which they lost 28-14. I still think it should have been... Um, maybe they should have took off a try and added a try onto their own because I, I didn't think the game swayed it like that. Uh, the Sacred Heart was a, was a terrible game to sort of see because... Um, I personally think that they sort of lost it even before that they got there. Um, they had a good game against Aurere, like shutting out Aurere, who was a good attacking side, and they shut them out with a donut and then scored 19 points of their own, which is great. And then I think it just... Um, I always, I'm always one that sort of looks at the roster. I'm always one that looks at the schedule and kind of... I always try and see... Uh, where is that? Where is that point in your schedule that you can make a run if um, if things don't happen right? And I think um, the old area one was a good one. They had to play Mags, which was just a terrible game. They lost fifty-seven nil, but then they needed to make a run against Todanga, Ongehanga, and then Dilworth, and they needed to make a run of those. Uh, one, two, three games are going into St. Kennegan's. And they took care of the first two one beating Tauranga and Ongehanga. But then they lost to Dilworth, which was... An, uh, that was an upset because I didn't expect Dilworth to beat uh, Calston. I didn't. I, I thought Calston had that game and they had the players and things like that. And, you know, and I just thought that they needed those three wins. Um, and then to get that one... Uh, to get your confidence up, to get the boys rolling, to come into St. Kennegan's and then at least put up a really good fight. 38-14 is okay, but when I talk about Calston, it's not okay. If if you know what I mean. like It's not okay to have that scoreline against St. Kennegan's if you're Calston. Um, that should be more, more of a battle. Um, and then I thought against St. Peter's, uh, you know, losing their last game, I thought that was a game that they could have went in and then sort of stole that game as well. Um, they had some really good players. Like Sebastian was always a player that I've uh, that I've always watched, and I've always thought, man, this kid's gonna he's gonna do something crazy because he's just so talented. He's, you know, he's so um, interchangeable. And reliable, regardless of where you have him, even if it's at first five fullback, second five center, or wing or whatever. Like he's just he's just got that talent center. So um, those kind of things are always gift a gift and a curse because when someone gets injured, you, your first thought is like, I'll just put Sebastian there, and then he'll take care of it. So like it was hard because he kind of had to shift around a bit, um, but he was one of the main players this year, along with Max and. Um, and Sione, um, Levi, and then, you know, Ezra is another player that I was, I'm looking for next year. Um, and so, and so when, when I look at next year's roster, like, because I'll be doing uh, previews for next season, um, it looks good. Like, it looks promising, and it looks like um, the coaching staff has taken care of the path for next year. And the boys to come through and not have to worry about who's going to league and all that kind of stuff. And those kind of worries and stuff like that. Because, I mean, they still have, I mean, uh, Fa'alea Penny will be back at halfback. I'm sure he's still going to be there. And him and Max. And, I mean, Max is, Max Maxwell is one of those kids that, like, um, and, like, you saw it in sevens is that he was... He's so talented. He's got. He's got mean footwork. He just, for me, he just needs to learn when to give it and take it, and those kind of things as well. Um, he'll have uh, Tuna back, who's just so fast and you know just gets through gaps and everything. And Danny, who was one of the younger kids that I'm that I'm looking at, all those guys will be back. So they're going to have a good team. They're going to have um, the players, and so. Um, uh, Hedemony is another one as well that um, I'm looking forward to seeing. But the, 
next year is going to be better. Next year is going to be good, and there's a lot of positivity around it. So that's my review for Castle Boys. Um, wait up for the next one. Peace.